Hey everyone, it's Dawn here. Welcome back to Bridal Business. I have another special guest with me today. Donna Silla is a multi-award winning mumpreneur, transformational business coach, international business awards judge, number one best-selling co-author, guest speaker, inspirational weight loss blogger and sustainability advocate. She has 25 years in the hair and beauty industry. Uh, Donna's been operating international multi-award winning eco and sustainable salons across Western Sydney since around 2004 and has since now launched Prima Donna, which helps women in business gain national and international recognition for their own entrepreneurial achievements and community contributions. Donna, thank you so, so much for being here. I cannot wait Hi. to dive in talking with you. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm so excited Hi. because Donna, we have now, you, are, you and I have been connected for probably mm -hmm. since the beginning, since I first started teaching like bridal, but mm -hmm. because you've had a salon, right? So you are a salon or have been a salon owner uh, and you do beauty as well as ha hair and makeup. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So my career was um, originally I was a nail technician. That was my first qualification to gain my hairdressing apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, and then my sister, um, and I'll talk about my story in a minute, but my sister was a beauty therapist. So then um, I wanted to do what she did. I thought, well, why am I on my feet all day? And she gets to sit on a comfy padded chair with <laughs> candles and essential oils and sit in the dark and be quiet. Why am I, you know, busting my arms and my legs and my back? Like hairdressing I want to do what she does so then I learned beauty as well in night school on top of my hairdressing apprenticeship added on as many skills and qualifications as I could um, and yeah added on makeup training and everything um, and my story is a little bit backwards I had commercial salons first yeah. um, and acquired um, two other businesses along the way and grew my salon bigger and relocated a few times due to leasing um, issues but then um, yeah now, now I have a very successful home-based business so oh, um, yeah a little bit backwards and now I coach other um, I started coaching 10 years ago other salon owners to do what I did so you know we have children we're on maternity leave and no one can go back to full-time employment so then how how can you safely do that legally and safely do that from home and still be highly successful and multi-award winning still being a home-based business which was a little bit taboo in our industry back in the day yeah that's that's really interesting so how did you first so obviously you've been uh through your time in your salons you would have been working with bridal clients um special occasion clients and general everyday guests yeah so, yeah so tell me a little bit about you know sort of your day-to-day -day, how it was day-to-day -day when you were sort of in full swing in the salons yeah and I think you know everyone's got a unique story and that's what I love everyone's journey is different and unique and that's what I love about the industry as well because you can end up absolutely anywhere like the world is really your oyster so for me I started with my sister and um, our grandfather was a um, hairdresser too back in the 50s and 60s he had his own barber shop so we grew up you know my dad and aunties and uncles grew up in the salon and then by the time I grew up um, you know we were playing in his garage you know he was still retired and working from home so it was it was in the blood it's in it's in our history um and I fell into it school work experience had no idea what to do and where to go and my hairdresser I had long thick hair that my weekly um salon wash and blow dry for my school long hair and my hairdresser was like oh well why don't you just come here um I'll sign you off if you don't like it um just sit in the back staff room do your homework for a week if you love it well then I get an extra pair of hands and you know you might enjoy yourself um, and thinking oh that's what pop used to do like I oh, don't want to do it but no love within hours loved it loved the talking loved women how good they felt when they left yeah the spring in the step that they have um you know and yeah I was like most people you know first couple of days on the job and you're sweeping up hair and you know you're thinking oh is this all it is but no you know what it was that experience that the women get when they left and how good they felt about themselves so, um, you know, for me, I worked my apprenticeships through a lot of salons that were, you know, really horrible, 
nasty, you know, and I was the complete opposite to back in the late, mid, late nineties, I was the opposite to what a typical hairdresser was, you know, like it was stereotypically, you know, tall, thin, blonde, bimbo kind of, kind of women. And I was the complete opposite. And my school careers advisor would say, oh, you're not smart enough to do anything else. You might as well just be a hairdresser. So it was kind of like, well, that was the mentality I was taught. Oh, well, maybe I just have to do it then. You know, like, well, I was good at it for work experience. Maybe I just do it. Um, but then because of, you know, the short, chubby, overweight girl, um, couldn't get a job in the industry because it was very stereotypical about looks and fashion um, so I had no choice. I had to go to beauty school and have a qualification in nails under my belt, which helped gain me my apprenticeship. So that was my first foot in the door. Okay, well, that was my first challenge. How am I going to overcome it and get in the industry that I want to do? Because I was finally found something I was good at, mm. um, which was great. You know, my apprenticeship ended up being in a salon that was two trains and a bus away from where I lived. So it was an hour and a half trek each way just to get there and back for the first couple of years. And for those that are a little bit younger, it was the old fashioned four year apprenticeship that we had to do. Yeah. Then, um, you know, and, you know, I've got a crazy story, you know, um, having to hitchhike to get back to the train station every day. I purposely put on weight so I wouldn't get kidnapped as a 17 year old, you know, like, like it's crazy, right? Because yeah. Like my, my, my journey's insane over the last 26 years. That's a story for another day. But, um, but yeah, I think, you know, my sister and I were working in places where, you know, people would have these glamorous, you know, brand name posters on the window and say, come to our salon, we stock L'Oreal or Goldwell or big, big name companies. Um, but really they've got cheap $2 from China product in the tubs at the basin or in the skincare tubs you know in the treatment rooms and I'm thinking you're you're marketing your business as this elite thing and you're charging clients for it but we're using crap in the back it stinks and it burns and you know within within months my skin was on fire my I had adult asthma that I never had before and my hands were burning and I thought like I can't live like this and I think my own morals and my ethics and my values were like what, what am I doing working for people that treat other people like that but you know like the main thing was my apprenticeship was an old-fashioned salon um, it was Nana's it was the bright orange vinyl chairs with the hooded dryers and it was their weekly you know Nana Nana's all booked their appointment together they all sit under the hooded dryers so it's literally you know shampooing out a week worth of lacquer um, and then it's setting and up styling and perms right that my apprenticeship was that so it was beautiful old-fashioned up styles heaps of lacquer that lasted them a whole week so they could sleep in a hairnet and silk pillows um, and it was beautiful and I think my training as an apprentice was very different to everyone else's it wasn't a creative you know high fashion kind of salon it was very classic chignons and you know that that's how it was that's how I was trained so it was literally learning on the mannequin head with the, my boss would have a little buzzer, like a drill sergeant, she literally would time me 20 minutes. The minute that buzzer went off, Donna, pull it out, brush it out, start again. You need to do these up styles in 20 minutes. Wow. And that's what my training was. I had to do a perm in 20 minutes. You know, I had to do all my roller sets and my perms and start to learn to do my up styles in 20 minutes. And that's how I was trained. And I thought she was this big drill sergeant, you know, this, you know, horrible woman um but I look back now and and I regularly tell her um you know like it's that training that I felt was quite regimented and a bit extreme actually trained me to to do to do what I do so I missed out on the fun and creative side but that was me yeah. so I ended up being the one that had the bright hair and I was you know short spiky blue one week and then I was bright green the next week so I took the creative side we took out on me and I got to be the weird the weird one um, but my clients were very sophisticated and stylish and old-fashioned and I think that's where it started so my career obviously sent me off to a few other salons and things 
and my sister and I started our own business and I developed a lot of health issues because of the chemicals I was working with. So we started our first salon in 2004 and we were one of the first eco holistic businesses because I needed products that weren't going to be toxic, um, that weren't going to hurt my hands that I could safely work with. Mm. Um, and my salon was positioned, funnily enough, just by chance, a salon that we bought out was positioned next to a girls high school which was a boarding school so the girls actually lived there behind the salon so we had instant access to teenage girls school formals and spray tans and waxing and the whole kit and caboodle all day every day literally backed onto our back door where the salon was their mums would drop them off for school for the day and then come into the salon and with my sister and I both doing hair and beauty having two treatment rooms um, we could actually balance all these mums and students um, to have everything under one roof. And I think that's what I really enjoyed about what we did. People were willing to pay to sit there for half a day yeah. to not have to travel to, to different things. And that's what I've been able to, that's my unique um, process for my business of what I've been able to market myself as over the last 20 being so, able to sort of offer multiple services multiple to your services clients to to one and yeah. you know where where everyone else I met and worked with other staff members were like, oh no no I like brides make me nervous you know they're they're bridezillas or they expect too much and I'm too nervous to do that or oh god I can't do it upstyle is going to take me three hours don't book him in with me so I think I naturally grew up, well, I'll do it. I'll do it. I wasn't scared. My own sister was a beauty therapist, makeup artist, and I was hairdressing first, my first qualification. But even she didn't like brides. And she's like, no, I don't want the stress. You do it. And I think I just thrived on it because, you know, like I found it very special that we're the first people that they see that morning mm. before the car driver, before the photographer, before yeah. anyone else, we're yeah. there as they're in their pyjamas and they're waking up. Um, and all of their bridal party starts to turn up and we're like, it's a, it's a beautiful feeling. We, we see them first. We, we get to do their hair and makeup. We see them done up and dressed yeah. in their gowns before their own family sees them, before their partner sees them. So um, it's something really, really beautiful and special to be asked to be a part of. Um, and my whole journey in business was around, well, how can, how can that, you know, and exactly what your training is, Dawn, and I've learned a lot off you and I, cr I do credit a lot of my success to you and your training. I um, know I you do, do and I thank I you mention, so much for it. I, <laughs> I do mention you in my award speeches. When I'm I know, <laughs> I was so overwhelmed when you did that. You know, I messaged yeah, you after that. I was in Singapore on stage, for those that don't know, and do credit and thank Dawn um, for a lot of my awards that, that I do win and the growth of my business um, and looking I guess looking at my business in a different way as yeah. well and not just relying on the physical labor side of what I was doing you know mm. I do have health issues that have gotten worse over the years so I had to look at and follow Dawn's advice on well what other income streams can I have what's my point of difference what else am I offering brides so you know 2004 we were already an eco-friendly business that was a bit, you know, nerdy back then. No one told anyone that they were eco. You would have been considered like some sort of hippie that didn't shower if you told people that you had an eco salon, right? No one cared, to be honest. My clients didn't care. Um, as long as it, the, you know, their colours came out right, their makeup looked beautiful. But it was, it was when it started to be, wow, it doesn't smell yuck in here. Wow, mm. those nails don't smell. My scalp's not itching. Mm. That makeup felt really good. It's not mm. burning. You didn't leave me with red skin. What were you using? And I think as business progressed, it's like, oh, maybe we should start to educate our customers and our clients about, well, what are we using? That makes us different and unique. But basically, my first award started um six months in you can tell I'm a hairdresser right because I just talk just talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> when people meet me it's like god you must have been a hairdresser in your past life well actually <laughs> I am three generations worth of hairdressing but um but yeah so I, I fell into business awards which is what I specialize in now helping other um women in business to gain recognition for the achievements and the things that they do um, and I literally fell into it, didn't realise what it was. My sister and I were only 22 and 23 when we started our first salon. Um, again, we were travelling an hour and a half each way to get there. 
And we had the local rep from the local newspaper turn up with a plaque and a folder and a certificate thing and say, oh, here's your finalist pack kit. You know, you're a finalist in the local business awards. And we're just like looking at each other going like, who is this guy? You know, and 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 oh, he did the usual, oh, can I speak to the owner, please? And it's like, yeah, that's us, you know. And, and we were young, right? So we had this big commercial salon and, you know, people really didn't take us too seriously because of our age. Kept saying, well, where's your boss? And it's like, well, I am the boss. Um, so that was a little bit of a hurdle in the first place, being qualified in three trade qualifications and being 22 and and you know mm. trying to trying to be professional um and come across as a brand that's experienced when we looked quite young yeah still do I'm 40 and still do young um, <laughs> we all do we all do but, um, but yeah kind of fell into it and I said well yeah. what do I have to do how does it work and he's like well you've got to write a, a submission you know buy a ticket to the awards dinner and blah 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 and you know write a speech because you could win and I'm like elbowing him laughing going <laughs> as if and then that night came around and he's like oh have you written, came around to the table and he said have you written your speech yet and I said well no, what for? Like, we're just here to have dinner and have a night out. And he grabbed me a napkin and a pen out of his pocket. And he said, I suggest you start writing something down now, young lady. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what are you talking about? Like, oh, I better scribble some notes then. Who, who would I thank if we did win? Um, and, do you know, I look back now and realise, yeah, some, some competition owners or judges or, or staff <laughs> do give some subtle hints that you might be on the right track. Um, and yeah, he was giving me hints to be like, no, Donna, be prepared because in 20 minutes you're going to be up on stage. And we won our first award. And I think I half laughed, half cried, half snorted, um, didn't know what I was saying, um, giggled through a lot of it and just thought like, what is this? deer in headlights kind of thing um yeah. but it was amazing you know like the my awards entry process um which is still quite similar now even after all these years you know you get to unpack your business really go through your business blueprint um you know really identify your key strengths what makes you unique and different to everybody else and identify are there any areas that you're lacking I guess you know and then it's like oh okay you know I stumbled on that question so for the next 12 months I might work a bit harder other businesses are doing that I'm not you know kind of work on it and then you know it really is a domino effect to be honest you win one local one which meant okay now I've got some substance judges are like kind of liking that we're a little bit different in our industry yeah. um and that the first one was customer voted so our customers did enough votes to be able to vote for us to be a finalist and then we put a submission submission through so we thought wow so you I, didn't know so no, again, no you idea. didn't know that your customers had been kind of voting you as a as a great local business right they didn't even tell oh, us so we're okay. sitting there thinking, like my so that's why he's just turned up and you've right. gone what are you talking about open up the appointment book who have we done in the last six weeks that's voted for us right so we're yeah. sitting there you know like a private investigator who would have voted for us so as they then came back for their next round of treatments we're like I, they'd see this you know finalist certificate and then winner's trophy thing on the desk and there's someone goes you know oh wow yeah you guys won and it's like you knew you knew about that because <laughs> we didn't know and be, I guess because we were out of town right we didn't even know these awards programs existed because it was run by the local paper and we, we didn't live there so we weren't aware of it so it was kind of like wow okay there's something out there that's a basically a customer service award yeah. that my customers have entered us for we just had to back it up and prove that what they think was good actually this is how we do it yeah um and we just literally had to back it up and put an entry together then we got mystery shopped and that's how we got judged so then we end up with a mystery shopper report for feedback to be like okay someone came on this date at that time and that's what your score was and back then it was 50 percent score came from your mystery shopper report 50 percent came from your written entry Wow. So it's like, well, this was really fun, right? And it's a little bit addictive to think, well, what else is out there? So I'm literally Googling customer service awards or hair and beauty awards. So that's awards. how you did it. You just I literally thought, just thought, well, what else, what else can I do? I There's got to be something else out there. Um, what like it was just a little bit of fun and thought, you know what, I don't get holidays, I'm self-employed, um, I don't get nights out. 
And that was a night out that I had fun, started to rub shoulders with some other business owners. Again, we weren't from the area. So, you know, we didn't know anyone else in business. We thought we were alone and doing it all on our own. Um, And it was a nice way to meet everybody else and start finding, you know, other clinics and practitioners, um, other modalities that had the same clientele base as we would so that you know one of our clients literally had her clinic around the corner she was a physiotherapist um you know then we started to work with her and it, you know our joint venture and collaboration journey kind of started from there mm. then we the felt key. yeah that's it mm. so then we had mm. others around us that were supportive of us and we tapped into other people's um databases sharing the same um the same thing and it kind of just grew from there and then we did you know oh okay let's try a state award oh look at that one best new business for the state a few weeks later oh okay our industry um we were a member of the um an association in the industry at the time they sent out um a newsletter to say who wants to enter their awards i'll give it a go why not got nothing to lose right and then um we were runner up the first time but we did get a phone call to say we had a really strong submission they we were just so new and fresh that they really wanted us to try again next year so we tried again next year Um, and the same thing it was interstate I got a phone call a week before the awards Donna are you really sure you can't come and I'm like sorry got a packed out so on I'm interstate nothing I can do about it we really want you to be there (laughs) again and I look back now thinking "Mm." They were hinting that I really needed to be there. Um, so my my sister happened to be um, up, up in Queensland at the time. So it's like, okay, I'll send my sister over then and organise for her to be there. And, yeah, we won an award. She gets all the credit and the PR and the photos and the marketing for it. And I'm back at the salon doing the work. But, um, you know, that was amazing. We won five grand worth of media coverage and magazine. Oh, my gosh. Um, advertorials and ads for the next 12 months you know what I mean so it's the prizes that go along with it as well and then it opened us up to a network of publishing and magazine editors that I'd never heard of you know we're in our early 20s and been in business for 12 months and had no idea how this all all worked and it kind of just grew from there then we learn about um bridal industry awards and start getting accreditation for that and yeah so our girls you know over the years you've got the girls that were at the school next to us that then you know they're having their formals then they're getting engaged engagement parties you know and then you kind of build that journey with them over the years um you know when you're still servicing them so yeah I think you know there was a few a few factors we were able to provide you know products and services that other people weren't doing we really cared about the customer service experience that they were getting because Mm. they had everything from start to finish they didn't need to book two different companies to to do it um and even now as a solo person yeah you you either do the work yourself or you back yourself up in a joint venture you know with your bridal hair then you back yourself up and find a a makeup artist and kind of tag team and do do the work together for sure but, oh my um, goodness your story kind of, yeah it snowballed from there and I've got 80 to 82 awards and counting now oh um, my and now, God, God, God. <laughs> Easy. now I help um yeah now I help other women to do that so that that was my ethics and my morals right so people are like oh how do you do it well it's not hard here's how I do it want to do it with me so I've always been about sharing the love yeah. And making sure that everyone else has the opportunity. Because what's the point of me being on stage all the time winning if no one else is up there with me? Yeah. Um, and I want to win because the judges judged me as the best, not because I'm the only one that bothered to enter. So I've spent a lot of years. <laughs> you can't just win because you're the only one that bothered. Yeah, by um, default. What's by default, right? By default? Like yeah. it has to be a competition and worthwhile. Um, so, yeah, I, I now bring everybody along with me so that we can we can all have a go. Oh my um, gosh. That everybody deserves to be up there and have a go. Now I'm happy to step, I step out of the limelight now. Um, <laughs> and I help everyone else with their entries because um, my trophy cabinets um, can't, can't well, handle it anymore. No, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's too full now. That's so, it. So but let me I'll, just let everyone know in the audience. So, guys, everyone who is watching this, um, <laughs> <laughs> this story is absolutely amazing. So, Donna is going to be doing a class on if you go to becomeabridemagnet.com. 
Ticketmaster.com if you have not got your ticket yet to my four day live event coming up next week. Um, you have to go and register for that. So Donna is actually going to be giving us a class on exactly this. She's going to be talking mm -hmm. about um, how to get recognition and win awards, which I'm super thrilled about. So I'm loving chatting with her about this today. Donna, I want to ask you, obviously now with, um, with what you're doing. So <laughs> why is it, why would we want to, number one, why would we want to look at rewards uh, awards for example and what holds us back from from doing it from actually stepping out of our comfort zone because i know i've looked at things before and gone oh i just mm, i don't know if it's really something i should do so talk to me about why and what, what the benefits are for hairdressers makeup artists to like opting in to do these awards and then what stops us from 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 doing it yeah, think? for sure. Absolutely. And I think the, the, the main thing is that everybody feels that they're either like too small, that it's just them, that they're a sole trader or a freelancer mm. or, you know, like I'm just mobile or I just work from home. I don't have a commercial brick and mortar business. I don't have staff. Um, I may not even be turning a profit yet. So I think that's the first the first level, right? People just don't think their business is big enough, strong enough, um, got a good enough story to enter in the first place. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing that holds people back too is they may think that it's a bit egotistical, that they may think it's just for the show offs, um, who it's all about winning and it's all about a trophy and standing up there saying, hooray, I am the best kind of thing. And I think yeah. that might put a lot of people off as well. Do you think it's because um, they don't want to, they, they're not confident enough in themselves to, to sort of, you know, they, they feel like that's making myself too, you know, What's the word when you're kind of yeah, when you're overconfident? Think, I'm too big yeah. for my boots if I start going on for a That's it. And, and I think it's it's the fear of the judgment from other people, right? Oh, yeah. So it's it's the fear of, oh, they're going to tell me, um, they're going to think that yes. oh, I've got an ego. They, they're going to um, tear me down and judge me like, oh, what did you do that for? Who makes you think you're good enough? And funny story, actually, my first Australian award and I rang my parents um, from there with my sister sitting there and saying, oh, my God, we just won, you know, like new business of the year, Australian new business of the year. And the first thing my own mother says on the phone, why'd they give it to you for? So, you know, like you don't, you don't even get the <laughs> true story. They don't. Um, thanks, mum. Love you yeah. dearly. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, your own family don't even think you're good at what you do. You know, yeah. like, true, like true story, put your hand up. How many people actually their customers um, is their own parents, best friends, girlfriends, you know, are they the ones filling up your books, getting their makeup done every weekend for going out, getting their hair colour done regularly, um, you know, are they really your client book, your appointment book full of your family and friends? Like I've got a big family and if that's all my clients where I would be booked out, right, mm. and I would have to hire 10 other staff to keep up with the general public. Mm. But the reality is your biggest supporters aren't always those who love you the most, right? Yeah. So I think a lot of people are too scared to put themselves out there for fear of judgment, fear of people thinking, and that's all in our head, right? That's where imposter syndrome comes from. Um, it is that, all in our head. A lot of the times it yeah. really is all in our head because that's, when you put yourself out there, a lot of the times you're surprised, you surprise yourself and other people surprise you. That's it. Exactly. And I think, you know, so it's, you know, I try, try to educate people on it's all in your head. And if anyone had an issue with you being on stage and winning an award for the amazing things that you do, it's their problem and it's not yours. Yeah. They're the ones that have an issue with tall poppy syndrome or, you know, have that crab bucket mentality. Right. So, and I can talk more about that um, in the training um, for the four day live event training, but um, you know, it's, it's awards are more about being the benefits are um, it's literally for, and for me and for most solo business owners, your business plan is in your head, right? A lot of us haven't done a course or haven't done anything yet to map out our blueprint. What makes us unique? Do a SWOT analysis and competitor analysis and really understand our business and got funding to start the business, right? Every, most of us just literally got a loan from the bank or 
yeah. whatever money we may have had. Or just sat on a shoestring. Did it, yeah, literally did it as a side thing till yeah. you could earn enough and get enough customers to quit your other day job to be able to, to do it, right? Yeah. Um, and that's another story. My sister and I lied to the bank, got 60 grand loan each, saying we were getting <laughs> married and then put our money together and bought out a salon. But that's a story for another day. Um, <laughs> what You do what you got to do, right? Um, so... <laughs> But, you know, like I think, you know, it's getting, it's, it's understanding and it's a mental game in your head and it's getting over the fact that, no, you know what, I'm proud of my business. Mm. I'm proud of what I do. My customers tell me I do a good job. Yeah. They keep coming back. So why wouldn't you want to enter? Because the benefits outweigh the time it takes to put your entry together. So just answering the question to put a submission forward helps you break down and understand what really goes on in your business. You get to identify your strengths and your skills mm. and unpack what makes you unique and you get to unpack your story and your journey. Mine's an insane long journey and I do pick and choose depending on the category and the type of program. I'm picking and choosing well, what part of my history am I putting in there? Yeah, um, to be relevant to, to that. To be kind relevant of... to the question, yeah. to the awards. But you know what? You've got judges reading your entry regardless if you're a finalist or not and then go on to win. You've got judges reading your entry that you don't know who they're going to be, right? Right. So they could be an investor, an angel investor. They could be another person in the industry who could actually, you know, want to give you a contract or want to, you know, be a joint venture with you or stock your product or, you know, yeah. work with you in some way. Um, and, and, I, and I've seen it a lot and it's happened to me too. They will still reach out and be like, you know what, you didn't make the top five. Yeah. But you are amazing. Please enter again. This is what I feel that you could work on next year. So it's the feedback that you're getting from the entry process as well that's really important. Not I love that they do that. So they give you some feedback and they like, say to you, like, so this yeah. is what you could, if you want to enter again, this is where we didn't, you didn't quite cross the mark. This is that's where you it. didn't tick the box. And, and I they, think that's what people need, right? And not, yeah. not all awards programs do. Many do. And yeah. it's part of their entry process. Um, many judges, and I've been a professional awards judge for over five years now, and many of us do reach out anyway um, because it's the right thing and we're kind humans and we're volunteering our time and we want to give back to the industry. So a lot of us will still reach out to be like, look, judging's finished. Just want you to know you've done an amazing job. Here's a few tips, you know, take it or leave it. Yeah. Um, but it's constructive criticism. Here's a few tips on what will really help you next year. I wish you the be best of luck because my job's done, right? So it's anonymous judging usually, and we're just giving our scores, but the event organizers will collate all that to work it out. So as I'm judging, I'm not going to know who's winning. I'm right. just giving my my opinion and I'm You already know in score. your eyes what your results. Yeah, that's what, it. You've got results you've what, given. what I would do, but yeah. you know, like the winners announced on the night is as much of a um, surprise as it is for me, as it is for, for everybody else. Do you um, attend the awards as well if you're judging? Do you, would you attend them or yeah, do, I you usually, do you do it behind the scenes or? Yeah, I usually do, um, especially if they're, you know, New South Wales local Sydney ones. Um, yeah, a lot of us get a free ticket um, to attend as a judge. And of course, mm. you know, like there was a part in my, my career where it's like, oh, okay, I've got to stop. I've got to decide, am I going to start judging and give back now um, and, and stop winning awards for my own business and, 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 and judge? And it's kind of like, oh, can I really give up the awards, Donna? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's become an addiction, hasn't it? It is. And you know, like, not going to lie, every client that I have is like, oh, my God, Donna, I know you said it was addictive, but I didn't believe you until we do it. It's addictive. Yeah, it's fun, right? And it's glitz and glam and it's totally up our alley in the hair and makeup industry right we like to get dressed up we want to get fancy dressed up and if you're like me and have no nights out and no holidays the awards calendar for me having those event dinners and lately it's been a bit virtual but you can yeah. still get dressed up and via zoom um but they're, they're <laughs> my nights out right um you know and that that's what I love about do you think it, it would but... go back to being more in person again now 
Um, a lot of them have started too. So, mm. for example, Oz Mumpanur Awards open on Monday um, and they've already planned their conference and in-person awards. Yeah, um, some global good. international ones are still going to be virtual because we can't travel international at the moment. Um, but for Australia, you'll find some um, Australia ones you'll find by their October, November gala dinner dates. Yeah, they, they will be putting some face-to-face -face ones on again, which will be exciting. Yeah, um, and you look at You know, you look at Expo as well. You know, Expos are starting to plan ready for August, mm. um, June, you know, June, July, August type thing. So, yeah, it look, looks like it's back on track that it's going to happen. But, you know, there's prizes as well, not going to lie. Um, hang on a minute we just lost you there oh no that's okay so you Tell said when i'm back okay um, so you yeah said, so there's prizes as well yeah there's prizes oh, as well right so it's not just the shiny trophy that you could potentially win or a finalist certificate that you add to your collection mm. um but that is exactly what um you know the third party credit credibility is all about so it's backing up what jenny l talks about with the seo and your testimonials and your customer reviews right so you're gaining all of those but it's putting those together in an entry um, to then have a trophy or uh, that little symbol on your website and your marketing to show that you were a finalist, someone else, a third party institution has judged you and considered you to be one of the top in that category. So when yeah. customers are searching for you and they're choosing between this mobile artist and that mobile artist, you've all got great reviews. Yes. What else is different? Yes. Oh, I'm going to go for the lady that's got, got a couple approach. of Thank award yeah. logos on her website, right? Yes. That's what it's all about. Someone else other than friends and family who can fake your reviews or competitors who want to write nasty reviews, yeah. that, that can all be faked, right? But no one can fake winning an award. A third party judge has judged you and considered out of everybody that entered, you are in the top elite of um, for that program, for that competition. So that's what it's all about. And it's the marketing and the PR that comes with it. So it is, oh, you don't yes. need to win, right? You don't need to win, but you will be well known and famous for being a finalist or a bronze medalist or, and you only need to win one. So think of the Olympic medalists, right? They can be famous 30 years ago, winning one gold medal in something, never had to win another one, but they're going to be known as a gold medal winning athlete for the rest of their life, right? Yes. And then they go on this massive guest speaker touring circuit for the rest of their life. Um, you only need to win one. Um, you only need to win two to be called a multi-award winner. So, you know, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and, and it can be a 10-year-old award. We like them to be relevant and current, of course, but in the eyes of the consumer, um, you know, that's what they, that's, that's another way other than your testimonials and reviews online. That mm. is the other visual way that um, your customers will recognise that you're above and beyond what your, your competitors are. So there's heaps of prizes. I've won cash, I've won marketing and advertising, um, you know, heaps of things. You can win holidays, um, you know, all sorts of different things, business-related stuff, coaching, mentoring, um, you know, all those kind of things, plus a nice little um, shiny trophy on the shelf. So I guess my... I want a trophy now. Yeah, that's it. I know everyone deserves a, tro <laughs> everyone deserves a trophy, right? Exactly. Um, I feel like Oprah giving out, you deserve an award. And <laughs> you all get an award. Um, exactly. But, you know, and, you know, for us as kids too, you know, like this generation now, we're being taught that every kid gets a participation trophy kind of thing, which is really <laughs> something that I don't... <laughs> Uh, you know, and it's and it's. Hard. I'm not so keen on that, and I'm not keen on that either, right? You know, I'm I not do... keen on it because I feel like the person that came first, second, and third deserve that award. That's it. If they've I worked feel a like bit harder, anyone gets an award. All that work, that hard work, that that first, second, third prize winners put into the efforts. You know, you know, like with kids, you know, they really tried their best. And I get That's that they right. tried their best. And I don't mind giving a certificate. That's fine. But the awards, the trophies, the recognition should go to those people who have, I believe, who are the best. That's it. That's it. And it's 
Yeah. And I, you know what? It is it is human nature to want to strive to be better than we were yesterday, yeah. right? That's and I part, think that's part that's of our me. DNA. Yeah, someone said that to me because um, we were talking about it. My son's uh, started to play uh, AFL now, like he's joined a little under eights team. And one of the things that the the coach does, he he does, he pulls the kids out and he recognizes them for something, doing something good. And I absolutely love the fact that he did that. Mm. You know, he said, right, come out here, stand here guys, I want you to give him an applause because he did this, this and this. And I love that recognition because I think that people should be awarded for something that they deserve to do. But and one of the mums, like she said to me that, you know, it's just when you see somebody getting recognition or getting an award and you are, say, let's say part of the same industry, part of the same team, she was talking mm. about obviously the boys. She's like, think about those boys now because they think, oh, I want what he just had. And mm. they strive then to be even better and they strive you know and I don't think there's anything wrong with the competition number That's one right. and I don't you know competition's healthy but also it's about the ability then to instill confidence in someone and I've just been talking with Martha actually but we've been talking about confidence in the business and confidence in our um mm. being able to deliver our prizes and stuff but it's all about you know having the confidence to go you know what I can do better and I'm going to do better that's my, you know, my, my next step. So I love that you said that, that you're, you're the same, you've got the same mindset as me. Yeah, as, exactly. Know, I'm not so keen on everyone getting an award because that basically devalues the person who actually did do, you know, you know the, did the hardest work or, or, or did the best you know that's it that's it that's right and that's you know and I you know I liken it to you know the Olympics as well there's always going to be someone who has you know gone above and beyond and achieved something better than the next person it doesn't devalue a silver or a bronze medalist no, and it doesn't not. devalue the other finalists or the other athletes that spent the last five years trying to get into that Olympics right um, it just means that yes there, there is a level that's what we strive for so in yes. business if you've got stuff and you've got some sort of pricing structure and incentive structure of course you're rewarding your team that is going above and beyond what their base um, wages are and there's a tiered structure usually if you've got a team under you um, or that you've been experienced as an employee yourself um, that you you're recognizing and rewarding other people that are stepping up above and beyond and I think that's what we should be teaching our kids in the next generation that you mm. if you're striving for something more than the average and the mediocre of what everyone else is just you know copycat copycat we're all doing the same boring robot thing when you're going above and beyond you should be recognized for it yeah and that's and what I say about in business as well that's something I teach I coach to mm -hmm. teach to all the time saying what do you do if you want to have a successful business what do you do over and above anyone else around you because mm -hmm. you know if you're going to try and position yourself you know as a hair and beauty professional there are there's hundreds within a 50 mile radius of you I can yeah, probably guarantee true. most people if you live in a remote part of the world you can guarantee that there are hundreds of other hair and makeup artists around you. So what is going to make you stand out over the next person down the street who probably charges, maybe they might be cheaper, maybe they charge mm. the same as you, but it doesn't matter. What do you do that is of value that you can show? And, and I love what you're saying then about, you know, the awards and the recognition. It's, it's, you have gone out of your way to put yourself out there mm. to to get that award in the first place and then you mm. have been recognized even if you're a finalist or you didn't even win you'll put yourself out there to be recognized um, mm. which makes you stand out over the person down the street who didn't bother yeah that's it and the it's reality another is step, isn't it just yeah another the the reality is it's about 70% of people don't even bother to enter in the first place. So that's number one. What's the one thing you're doing wrong when it comes to business awards is you didn't bother to enter in the first place. And I think, you know, um, you know, and if it puts people off, oh, I don't have the time, well, then you outsource it and find someone that can do it for you. You've got right. the time and, you know, but you don't have the money to pay for someone. Well, there's people out there like me that will teach you step by step how to do it, you know, and, and it's just, it's a little bit of effort. And it's literally everything that's going on here 
and what you're physically doing all day and just putting it on paper to actually submit it. And then it's literally just backing up what you said. So you throw in a few quotes and testimonials, you add in a few pictures of you doing exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, but my, my journey's changed and it's been, um, you know, we didn't have business coaches and things back in the day. So a lot of it was trial and error, um, you know, and I, I did things that you, you know, and I love that I love expos and you don't love expos. Like I love, I love that. But bridal expos have been great for me over the years because I learned how to get the most out of it and no one else bothered. No one else thought it was worth the expense or they didn't know in our industry how to do them. Yeah, I think that um, was the key. It's not that I didn't like expos, but it was just more of the fact of is that you don't, the reason why they're a waste of money is because nobody knows how to do them properly. How to do it properly. That's why I would say it. Yeah, that, it. Was, that was, yeah, I know you're, you're talking about one of my <laughs> videos that I did, which was wedding expos are a complete waste of money. But it. It, when I actually talk about it, like I actually do say the reason why they're a complete waste of money is because you have got no idea what you're doing. And if you don't know how to attract people to your store, how to get names and emails, which is what it's all about, building up that email list, building up that rapport, meeting and greeting. If you don't do it the right way, you're not going to make any money. But you love the expos because yeah, you actually expos. found your way of being able to drive clients to your business through the expos. And I think yeah, that's, that's the key. It. And that's the key. And it's very like, I look back at photos of previous expos I did 15 years ago, and it's completely different to how it would run now. And that's yes. due to technology and things, you know, yes. I had a, you know, I originally had an old fashioned giant photo album with the plastic peely sleeve and I literally yeah. printed yeah. photos of my brides. I came across you know? mine the other day. I just moved <laughs> and I opened up a box and I went, oh, my big portfolio. Yeah, my big portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that, you know, you'd set up a table and, and that's how you did it. Now you've got beautiful, you know, touch screen, you know, yeah. um, TV, TV on things. rotate with all And the it's images. on this slideshow yeah. rotation kind of thing. And, and, and now, you know, when people learn, Learn that it's about building that connection with someone they want a real face behind the business and they just want to know how would you wow them you know if if you chose me yes. and you know it doesn't matter if they walk past and they tell me I've already booked elsewhere no this is that's fine but I can help you in other ways this is yes. what else we do well do, you know like well hopefully that business is giving you this this and this so the, I hope you're getting that oh no I'm not getting that why mm. why what are you giving so from day dot um which people thought Donna you're mad but I incorporated the costs into into my business so I was giving away survival kits yeah. Um, you know, bridal, bridal day survival kits as part of booking your wedding thing with yeah. me. No one else was doing that. I was doing bridal glamour party parties for bridal parties in my salon and closing the doors to do pamper parties back in 2004 before anyone knew knew what that was. So mm. it was always about trying to be innovative and that little bit one step ahead. Mm. And I didn't care what my competitors were doing other than the competitor analysis when I had to learn to talk about well how am I different? Yes, exactly. And that's what I say. But, I think you should always know what other people are doing because then you can differentiate yourself. It's not about knowing it, what I'd they're doing to to fit in it's knowing what they're doing so that you could do something different so yeah so that you don't do what they're doing right yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so that yeah you're doing, totally you know something above and beyond what they're doing mm. and then you know and then of course over the years I've gone along and learned a lot from you Dawn which you know helped to unpack you know the social media side and the the funnel side and then you know digitizing things and having different income streams you know to then grow the business because you know I have a medical condition and there's data I've had a lot of surgery and literally just had to close with no other help um, and being able to form ways of what other income streams can I have with my knowledge and my skills. So then when it comes to an awards entry, it's like, wow, this woman really knows if she was sick tomorrow, um, how, like this business still goes. Yes, I've yes. got a network of other artists that I network with and we refer customers to each other. So fine, if I was sick and couldn't do that wedding tomorrow, um, what's my backup plan, you know? And and you have all that strategy in, you, um, in your business plan and everything ready to go. And, you know, like I'm passionate 
passionate about awards. I really feel everyone deserves to, to enter. Yeah. May the best person win, you know, and it's yeah. community over competition and, you know, our industry needs to stick together and be supportive of each other. And, um, you know, I'm not a sore loser. You know, yeah, you go home and feel a bit, oh, I really wanted to win. That's yeah. normal human nature behaviour. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you then think, okay, well, why? I'm going to wait for the feedback. I'm going to work out why. What can I do? Where did I have strength in? What part of my entry may have, you know, lost a few points? And mm. that's what I teach, right? So you're, mm. you're yeah. You're, tell us a little bit about prima donna and and what yeah, it is. And, so and... so what I teach you guys is the secrets from a judge's point of view as well. So what judges are looking for and all the secret tips and hints about how to nail your entry so that you you're putting your best self forward. You're not missing anything. Um, with your supporting documents or, and your entries um, so that you're getting the best out of it and learning, well, what's, well, why bother? Is there a return on investment? Of course there is, but, you know, like everything else, you, you know, and awards are part of your marketing strategy. Mm. So you do need to track it and you do need to work out, okay, well, what were the results? What feedback did I get? Um, you know, how can I, the analysis project, process of well, how can I then use that to then better the next entry and like I said earlier it's a domino effect so once you enter one you've then got that to put in your submission for the next one and the next one and the next one and it's very thick and fast award season we've lost you again me now yeah you're oh, back, back again okay so say again it's very thick and fast so yeah award season is very thick and fast so it literally starts around late um april so pretty much now yeah. is mm -hmm. when all the awards are open and you start getting all your awards entries and submission um supporting documents to provide evidence all together because then the entry closing dates bam 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 goes really fast mm. and by about september october november that's when all your gala um dinners that's when party season typically kicks in and you get to enjoy you know the network working and everything that goes along with attending all the virtual or in-person um, in person things. So I have a few options um, for people. I do have a seven week course that goes through the entire process A to Z. So it's a little bit of one-on-one -on -one affordable coaching, how to do it. It's a little bit of handholding and you literally learn all of my secrets from um, how to um, unpack your business all the way through to the submission process. Um, I also do a done for you service. So if you've got the money, but not the time and you wanna be involved, but don't know where to start and couldn't really care don't have the time you're happy just to offload it and pay me to do it I can do that for you so you and would organize it for them and submit their entries yeah absolutely so we do a strategy um strategy session to work out you know what's your unique story and what awards you want to go for and then I literally interview you research everything about you and your business and literally submit everything on your behalf for you yeah. um, and I'm quite different to the industry so I do a 50% upfront payment um, and only if you win do you have to pay the the other half so um, I back myself and I'm very confident that um, I do have a very great success rate so um it's brilliant it's, it's a different offer and again it's being unique and different in mm -hmm. my business compared to what my competitors would be um and it's not just boring copywriting that doesn't sound like you it's using your voice and your unique story so the judges won't know i like a ghostwriter so the judges wouldn't yes. know if i wrote it or, or you wrote it i'm literally just saving you time by putting it all together for you um and i do like a um academy online digital academy of resources so if you've got the time um and not much money but you just want to pick and choose the modules that you want to work on or you know little um courses and things of tips and tricks and downloadable tools and worksheets to be able to do it yourself you can do that as well for those that want to give it a go um, yeah 
without having to feel like they're investing because some professional copywriter or PR companies, journalists will charge you about $1,500 per entry just to enter, just for them to write your entry. Mm. Then you've got any entry fees and things that go on top of it. So, you know, um, but what How I... How much does it normally cost on average to enter the awards, Donna, would you say? Do they most, all vary or? Yeah, it varies. And most of them would be free, which is great. Um, oh. If you find that they're sponsored by big sponsors like banks or lawyers and things as a major sponsor, you'll find that a lot of them are free to enter. So it's literally just your time to actually put everything together. But I'm a big believer in creating one big document that's your base document and then you just tweak it save a copy another word document to then for tweak it for that category award. and that yeah, award right yeah um, create a master canva document of your supporting documents but again you tweak it save a new file for each for each award pull out pages that you don't need add in the evidence supporting documents you do need and and submitting that global ones can start to be a little bit more expensive that works out australian dollars for those that are work um australian probably can be anywhere from like 250 to 600 Aussie dollars up mm. to 500 US dollars yeah um, then you're paying for the trophy to be shipped to you which can be like another $500 fee so you Ugh. do that's this but that's part of your marketing strategy and your yeah. budget and that's what we discuss at the start when we talk about the strategy behind yeah what, okay. what, what story angle do we have to promote what makes you unique what 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 are we going to put forward what's important to you so what trophy that label on the trophy on your shelf what do you want to be known for is it because mm. you're a sole trader is it because you're a mum in business do you want to be the best makeup artist in australia or the globe do you want to be the best bridal stylist do you want to just um be uh you know best new business you know what 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 angle are we aiming for what mm. are we searching for yeah um and then it's putting that strategy behind it so you know, as a freebie, a free bonus that I will offer everyone who's doing um, Dawn's beautiful four day live um, business blueprint course is I will be doing for free. We'll have a one on one Zoom strategy session to unpack your unique story and your um, and your angles and your business blueprint to put that together. And I will put an awards calendar together for you. So you'll end up with about 30 to 50 and it doesn't mean I want to overwhelm you but um, a good checklist chart um, in order of due date of submission due date so you've got a clear idea of what awards and categories that would be suited to you that you qualify for um, so if it's something that you're interested in and it's not scary once you once you know how to do it um, and we'll do a checklist and um, workbook for you so that you can start straight away um, after you've done Dawn's beautiful four-day course and get started and start entering your own. You'll learn all my secret tips from the straight from the judge's mouth um, to give you the best chances of moving moving forward. Oh my god, I cannot wait for your class, Donna. Yeah. It's going to be so awesome. This is I completely can't... new to me, and I'm, yeah. I'm actually really excited about it. I'm excited. Yeah, that's it, and I'm excited to kind of see some familiar names hopefully you know all of you guys um are a little bit motivated to to give it a go and have a crack at, um because you never know where it's going to lead you never know who the judge is that's reading it what feedback you can get um and it and can be life-changing feedback right it can mm. literally change the way you run your business um, and winning an award or having the media and PR exposure literally changes the growth and trajectory um, to become, you know, to become well known and be the expert in your industry and the expert in your field. Um, and it opens up doors, unlimited potential of where, mm -hmm. where it can take you in the industry. So I do wish you all all the best and I can't wait to hear about everyone's results and if they're oh going to give God. it a go. Yes, awesome. Yeah. So guys, go to becomeabridemagnet.com if you have not yet signed up for the four-day live event starting next week. You're going to have a class with Donna where she's going to be teaching you all about how to get recognition and win awards. I am so, so excited about that. Donna, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Talk to you soon, ladies. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Bye. Bye.